What happens when you switch the roles of police officers and civilians? Well, today we're gonna find out on this episode of Switch. Let's go. Hey, buddy, can I do uh, a, a back of my car, please? Hey, my man, stop real quick, my man. Have you guys ever wondered why police officers do what they do? Or what about the police officer that's just speaking over you and not allowing you to talk as a civilian? Well, want to know more because what we're going to do today is we're going to put real civilians in the shoes of a police officer. We're going to allow them to experience what it's like to be a police officer day in and day out. Today on Switch, we're here in Corona, California, where we're going to throw civilians in the shoes of police officers. We're going to walk them through what use of force is like, what tools they have at their availability. But at the end of the day, we're going to put them in the shoes and allow them to make the real life decisions that are being made every single day. So stick around as you guys watch this episode of Switch. So the reality of police work, you go one call, and if you're lucky enough to come back to another call, you gotta handle different calls. You can't just leave and, and say call the day over, all right? So what we're gonna do right now is somebody, we're, we're in a little neighborhood right now in the city, and somebody said there's a random guy in the middle of, the, of this little area over here. And he's besetting his hand, he's talking to himself. So we need you guys to handle it as you guys see fit, all right? You guys are, arrive on scene together, and so just consider all your use of force options. You got your gun, tasers, uh, somebody has a baton, consider all that stuff, all right? You got the radio. Any questions? No, we're good. Y'all ready, go. ready to do this? Yeah. All right, fellas. Nope, no game planning. You arrive on scene, we don't have time to game plan sometimes. I mean, dispatch called in and said there's someone with a machete, but I don't see anyone. Right. Yeah. You want to go on this side and I can walk over here? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Go on the right side. All right, two in, two out. Yes, sir, two in. All right. I advise over here in the suspect. How's it going, hey, sir? Hey, what's up? How you doing, brother? Hey, 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 what are you guys doing? Hey, sir. Hey, oh, man. No, no. It's no, all right, hey, man. No, leave sir. me alone. Leave me alone. Hey, hey, stop moving on me, officer. Sir. I'm not doing it. Hey, put your gun away, man. He got mental health, man. Hey, I know him. He all right? Sir, I need you to put the machete hey, down. Hey, leave me alone. I'm not doing Sir, anything. I need you to put the machete down. It's Sir, I need okay. you to back up, please. Okay. Come on, Sir, I need you to... Hey, we know him, man. Know leave him alone. Right. He good people. Oh, You're right, man. Whoa, 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 officer. Officer, look at that. Look at that. Hey, 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 sorry, man. Y'all can go. We got him. You're right, man. Shot fire! Shot fire! Fellas, yes, how do you guys feel? That was different. I mean, you had the community getting involved. That was very stressful, very stressful. Okay, so here's a little caveat. Did you guys notice anything about me? What was there something, was there anything interesting about me? You had the machete. Okay, what was I saying? You were talking to it like, like it was a person. Is there something, is there something a little off about that? Something very off about that. What would you say is off? You oh. have a mental disorder. Right. Potentially or on drugs. Well, let's just say in this scenario though, let's just say in this scenario that I did have a mental disorder. Let's say I had schizophrenia. And those guys that came out that were fil that filmed me, they all live in the neighborhood and they know I have a mental disorder. Right. Does that change anything? I don't think it changes anything because there is immediate threat. So you have a knife or a machete, you still can cause some type of harm. Right. So I actually was able to get to him before, and I don't think you actually shot me. So I got to you, your partner. Did you guys notice where you guys were at and adjacent to each other? I don't think we did. The intent was, so, but the thing is we didn't know where you were at, so that's what threw us off, so then we saw ourselves getting separated. So is that a danger now? Mm, yeah, it is. So are you saying we should have followed each other? Well, you guys have to figure that out on the fly. Right. Because I changed it, I started moving on you. And the moment I start moving, I'm a deadly threat towards him. Right. So you start shooting, but yet you now jeopardize him. Who else did you jeopardize? I want to say the individuals on the cell phone. Everybody in the neighborhood. Wow. So how, what, what, let me ask you guys, what would be the right way to handle this situation if there is one? Honestly, I don't, I don't know. What I would say, maybe just staying closer together, you know, throughout the entire time. 
And then from there, we try to do our absolute best to maybe even calm down the... But, I mean, it's so hard because we have them on the cell phone, but then we have you with the, with the There's machete. an immediate threat right there. Right. How much did they, did, they, did they hurt the situation or help the situation? They hurt the situation. How did they hurt? Because they're distracting you by talking to you. They're elevating their voices. Right. They're asking, what are you doing? This is not right. Why do you right. have a gun? And so you're trying to de-escalate that, but still keep your focus on the target. Gotcha. So the news comes on the next morning. I say you guys kill me, but the headline is going to read, officers kill schizophrenic man who was suffering from a mental health crisis. Right. How does that make you guys feel now? We feel bad, but nobody knows the full story. How does that make your wife and your kids feel when they see their dad's face blasted on the news saying that their dad just killed somebody that was mentally ill. Mm. But nobody knew what you guys went through though, right? right? Hey, excellent job guys. I wanna give you guys a round of applause for that, man. This episode of The Switch would not be possible without our sponsors. I wanna thank SC Village for allowing us to utilize their facility, but most importantly, I also wanna thank 88 Tactical for sending out all the equipment that we were actually able to use during these scenarios. Thanks again, guys.